it's a pleasure to talk to you on challenges and opportunities in geotechnical engineering. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Amit Sivatsava for giving me an opportunity to come here on this uh, Facebook forum and then give some ideas on what are the challenges and opportunities that we have in geotechnical engineering. As uh, civil engineers, uh, we have this subject geotechnical engineering and uh, any civil engineer needs to deal with uh, geotechnical engineering and we the understanding is that particularly in um, undergrad curriculum that uh, the geotechnical engineering is more connected with soil and uh, primarily we are taught uh, two subjects one is soil mechanics uh, which is essentially the discipline that talks about classification of soils and then the mechanics associated with that like compressibility, shear strength, and uh, some of the engineering properties associated with that. So essentially, we're trying to understand the properties of soils here. Then uh, we also have what is called foundation engineering or geotechnical engineering, where we try to design structures, engineering structures such as foundations, dams, tunnels. Essentially, we try to understand uh, the the um, geotechnical engineering connected with this uh, um, particular structures. So we try to understand the properties or engineering properties required and how those engineering properties are relevant in design of these um, systems. So we try to essentially see that the we measure the soil properties. We also measure the uh, the performance properties of the systems. Like uh, once you design we understand the performance properties as well. So essentially what a, a, a geotechnical engineering does is that you take some soil samples, then go to the design office, then, uh, you know, analyze the basic properties, then engineering part properties, then go for design. In the sense, say, for example, a shallow foundation or a deep foundation or whatever is a structure. So we try to come out with the design parameters then um, analyze them subsequently the structure so design so actually in most of the offices the design is an issue that we stop uh, so what i should say is that at a undergraduate level or uh, most of the civil engineers know about a bit of foundations a bit of uh, uh, dams and all of that uh, particularly with an engineering background, engineering background. But beyond that, if they want to understand, you know, they need to really work in the field. And they have so many challenges in the field. Um, so, for example, I can say that in geotechnical engineering, uh, maybe uh, the way that it is taught, a lot of importance needs to be given to the different types of structures. So I should say that, like, um, you know, not only the shallow foundations and deep foundations, we have uh, essentially transportation infrastructure in the form of roads, airfields, railroads, and, uh, you know, pipelines, tunnels, and subways. So, but then there is always a question that are we doing it right? Of course, we understand that the soil behavior is well understood. So foundation is also well understood. But you're looking at the infrastructure failures in the country today, uh, particularly, say, for example, the failure of retaining walls, the failure of uh, dam structures, or infrastructure problems, are we doing it right? And not only that, in geotechnical engineering, nowadays there are a lot of challenges because in the olden days, the investigations were not complete. And now there is a need for better investigation practices. Not only that, the performance monitoring of structures like instrumentation has to be done. Uh, then ground improvement techniques have taken a big role in improving the properties of soils. We also have geocentric materials that have come into picture and uh, they have dominated the uh, thinking of uh, civil engineering so much that they have been uh, used very well in uh, all civil engineering systems, right from uh, geotechnical engineering applications to road applications to dams like or canals, geo engineering applications, there are too many. So ge geocentrics is one thing that has made a very, very important um, change in engineering uh, practice. Uh, there is another challenge that we have in geotechnical engineering that 
you know, a dam is constructed, a foundation is constructed, or even there is a seepage somewhere, or even um, there is some sort of landslide that may come. Are you really monitoring these systems? No. Uh, so that way it leads to long-term failures. Then do you have any guidelines in the country that are geotechnical safety guidelines? Say, for example, we see a lot of inundation everywhere happening in the whole country because of the rains. And uh, the, are there any forewarning systems? Are there any uh, systems that one can um, understand them properly so that uh, the systems are prevented from failure? Or is there any calculated system of understanding? Like, you know, you must see that now there's so much uh, flooding in everywhere. The casualties are all the roads, the dams, the um, uh, highway network. Of course, there could be some problems in many other structures. Uh, so can't you have assessment of geotechnical structures? Other point that I wanted to say as a challenge is nowadays, you know, because in, at undergrad level, we are only taught two to three subjects at the max. But then when it comes to practice, uh, you know, it is always a daunting question. Geotechnical engineering is quite complex because there are so many challenges if uh, many of the youngsters and the practicing engineers take a positive view and then learn, learn the developments. It's nice. Uh, landfill and then waste disposal systems has been a big issue in uh, geotechnical engineering. The practice has not been very satisfactory in some of the developing countries. Site remediation or a contaminated soil is something that is a very burning topic, but it's not addressed. Of course, in some places, it depends on the country to country, their practices and all of that. Um, natural hazards like landslides, earthquakes do come. Do you have a proper system of understanding um, the response of structures because of landslides and earthquakes. Uh, people talk about sustainability nowadays. Are you trying to uh, implement these designs based on sustainability or only the cost-based designs? So this is something that we need to really uh, introspect, particularly in uh, many of these, uh, you know, it's a global issues. The challenges in geotechnical engineering are quite uh, global. And uh, so if you're able to do well at a local level, and then it serves as a very good example. People have been using a lot of uh, waste products nowadays in geotechnical construction and to the, their suitability, their applicability and all of that, because um, waste use of uh, reuse of waste products is a big industry itself. And uh, other point that we have is preservation, restoration of historic structures, forensic engineering, there are many, many topics that we have in geotechnical engineering and, um, you know, they're quite challenging. So one can have a lifetime in that. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, initially one should really pick up some of the topics and then uh, understand them, their, practice them. Uh, what has happened at international level was that uh, the, the, we have what is called ISSMG, International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. They have identified number of themes and thrust areas in which there is a lot of work that is being done in, in India and elsewhere in the, in the different parts of the world. They're, they have divided their work into different themes like laboratory test testing, institute testing, then physical modeling to understand the behavior of structures. Then they also have what is called numerical methods to understand the behavior of uh, structures again because we can model them exactly the way that it is there in the field. Then we also have a very important complexity called unsaturated soils. The unsaturated soil behavior is quite complex, but uh, the efforts are not much uh, because you need uh, sophisticated equipment. Um, you also have expansion soils that's more relevant in Indian conditions because uh, the expansion soils problems are too huge. You have stability of dams, dikes, scour, erosion. Uh, so then we, are, we actually divide that into different areas of geotechnical engineering. Say, for example, we can call it as transport, transportation geotechnic, which means that geotechnics that are connected with construction of roads, railroads, tunnels, whatever is related to, to transportation infrastructure. Uh, it is an interesting uh, challenge and one can divide that into a whole of, uh, one can specialize in transportation geotechnics only. You know, you can see most of the railway engineers and highway engineers do that. We also have uh, geotechnical earthquake engineering, essentially connected with 
you know, people, the understanding the response of uh, soils under earthquake conditions, uh, that's a big area by itself. And people, you know, particularly living in California, they're all experts in geotechnical earthquake engineering, you know, because they live with earthquakes. And, um, you know, so for example, people working in lands, if they're having landslide problem, they should be experts in that area. So like that. So in fact, tunnel construction has been a, a expert area. You know, you have only a few experts on tunnels, even in, in particularly in India, and then there's so much work. Um, so other thing that we should recognize is that what we are taught in uh, regular engineering is that we have given a, we have been given a few set of um, concepts like but then we should understand that the geotechnical design is quite interactive the stability of any geotechnical um, structure depends on many factors not only the loads because of atmospheric conditions like earthquakes or even the rainfall or whatever the even the climate eff effects the issue is that the design is a process itself is interactive uh, we should recognize that the design is interactive in nature and that's why we need to do a lot of maintenance the moment you know that the the you know we know that the structural behavior of uh, material will change with time so that is why does the why does it change with time and we are actually giving importance to the time dependent factors such as earthquakes and um, rainfalls and their material degradation characteristics so we need to really uh, do a, an understanding of the design process in an interactive manner and establish maintenance systems so that the life of the structure is prolonged our investment becomes worthwhile otherwise we end up having structures that fail in a six months or to one year or the performance is not adequate so we also have subject offshore geotechnics, which is so important, uh, particularly in Indian context that we have offshore line of uh, 3,700 kilometers all, all along soft soils we have. Uh, but the engineering connected with soft soils is so important. Ground improvement needs to be done. So then uh, land reclamation, in fact, in places like Mumbai and all that, reclaiming lands becomes an important topic, definitely in some areas where the soil is soft or even you may have to reclaim from sea or some other uh, water body. So things are quite challenging. And um, you have what is called a geo environment engineering, which is something very, very unique that, um, you know, you're trying to talk about design of landfills, waste containment systems, containment transport. It's a very, very big in dimension, actually. I mean, even somebody can spend a lot of time on talking about geo environment engineering itself. And um, then, we also have topics called risk assessment. Essentially, how is the system behaving? Like, is a system, like I just mentioned about performance. So when you are trying to understand performance, if the performance is not satisfactory, it fails. So when it fails, there is a lot of risk because of uh, uh, loss of money, loss of public life. So what should be done? So field monitoring, do you have expertise? So like that is actually, I see that that's a big problem in many of the uh, countries. This is where some of the engineering uh, students or many of the young engineering people, they can pick up. There are so many topics. How can I make a, a good business out of it is something that we want. Even the forensic analysis like failures. So the moment you understand how things fail, then you now you understand how things can go wrong. So you can prevent them uh, properly with a manner that... Um, the you know you may have a nice design analysis and performance monitoring systems so energy geotechnics is something that's very unique like you know people have been working on how to use uh, the uh, energy you know recover energy from many of these materials like we have energy piles the then you have geo education you know so, so there are so many topics that we have in uh, geotechnical engineering uh, but what is taught at a BTEC level is something that there are only two to three subjects at the max. And then when they come out, they see that there are so many challenges. Uh, you know, so one needs really, uh, in my opinion, that um, they need to pick up a topic. And uh, how do you fill up the particularly the gaps in practice? I should say that there are a lot of there is a lot of knowledge. Actually, ISSMG, I should say, in uh, the ISSMG is something that's a very unique uh, organization in the world. And so in the 
we have what is called indian geotechnical society which is associated with issmg so lot of knowledge is there but how do you practice it is something that we need to understand that's where some of these uh, interactions do help because particularly for young engineers it's essential that uh, we need to really have a clear pathway my topic uh, for uh, discussion would be that how do you address these gaps like when you have so many identified areas clearly what what shall we do like so for example in engineering in civil engineering so much data is there you know so much data uh, about uh, rainfalls earthquakes loads uh, performance uh, payment performance you know there so much data you know design of uh, engineering systems is quite challenging particularly in civil engineering and but then the data analysis has not been very very uh, satisfactory actually there is so much stress on dat- data analytics nowadays and machine learning uh, but then i think best applications are in geotechnical engineering or civil engineering for that matter that if somebody can pick up some of the techniques like data analytics and the machine learning techniques they can have a startup they can have a, a lot of understanding of uh, how a good data will lead to better solutions with time uh, so that's a very important challenge uh, so data analytics in geotechnical and civil engineering practice is one thing that one can explore and people should know the importance of data then uh, what is happening is that the uh, positions see like what is happening in uh, general context is that you don't have specialized engineers in the different areas in uh, say for example um, the different i mentioned about different geotechnical engineering special specialties like say for example transportation geotechnics or even environmental geotechnics or even a person connected with offshore techni- in geotechnics in fact uh, this type of classification is well established in many places and they are really creating because of this ex- extra good knowledge on each of the areas and their practice because knowledge if it is practiced properly it leads to lot of uh, you know infrastructure inputs better infrastructure you can have minimum failures you can have that's the beauty of it so that is a knowledge creation knowledge creation should lead to employment and the employment you know we should project as a, a generation that we have to tell the government or the parties or you know tell that there are so many opportunities are you create systems so then you know both we need to really have some sort of um, systems both at the government level and private sector uh, to see that this uh, uh, all these things are implemented in a proper way like consulting services a group of people say for example in uh, Uh, landslides only you know they can take up only on landslides completely about their instrumentation monitoring or even only in geotechnical engineering or even transportation geotechnics now one should go for a specialties so that uh, one can establish themselves so for example we have what is called high speed railways nowadays that government of india is planning but suddenly you know can we improve our track system to um, uh, upgrade to that high speeds of 200 km per hour something is something very unique and who will do it so it's important that you know we have to really think about uh, some of these topics on what makes uh, india better or any of the developing countries so i would like to just mention a few examples that uh, you know i was just mentioning about soil investigations um, so then what are the uh, analysis that we do and performance monitoring and evaluation uh the statement that you know when it comes to soil investigations um the soil is something very tricky compared to so- the concrete and uh, steel the soil is not uh, it's a natural material it's not made by man like as the, it's a carl sagge statement that the as you move from point to point you have uh, a lot of variations so when you take samples you know the sampling should be adequate to represent the soil and also it give a complete understanding of the um, behavior of uh, soil and then the response of the structure that is going to come on that uh, so that's a very challenging job so the investigations are always not very precise you know and the second thing is that we also make in our uh, theories that the soil is isotropic or homogeneous but then to what extent this concepts can be used is something that uh, we should see and uh, like the way that we do address you know as i said 
uh, we should go by data driven approaches in engineering now you know in the olden days or even currently we have in practice what is called um, factor of safety based approach which is something that the load is coming there is a resistance so the resistance by load is called factor of safety or we have what is called the capacity of the system divided by the demand on the system so that's we call it as capacity but what is happening is that the loads are always variable say for example earthquake loads the um, like any of the loads are always variable uh, so what happens is that we normally use uh, what is called um, the um, load factor design where the loads are increased resistance are decreased uh, but these things are well characterized by what is called coefficient of variation uh, the steel and concrete their coefficients of variation is quite less compared to soil i mean they have variations of the order of maybe 15 to 20 percent but then when it's come to soil it's very very complex as i said it's a particulate and we assume that the soil is elastic and uh, have a value of young's modulus for it but the young's modulus variations are 100 times definitely you know so because it varies as a con- function of the confining pressure pore pressures and there are so many factors that influence the uh, modulus and uh, so the variations can be very high even the permeability variations the way that it is done you know they are variable uh, so for example people do cone penetration test or spt test highly they are all variable and what is happening is that in our designs we use some numbers how do you get these numbers you know it is a, a very tricky situation that uh, numbers always have to be justified because the issue is that the uh, you know the people are paying money for their design and the construction so if you, uh, if the factor of safety is little low then the chance are that it fails and um, the or if it is too conservative there's lot of money invested so how do you strike a balance so what is that we have called what is called reliability based uh, approach nowadays the, i was just mentioning that we should go to data driven approaches like so uh, the reliability based design approaches encourage this like because you keep on collecting data and uh, you know uh, whether they because the loads continue to increase uh, resistances they may come down so you will understand how to improve the system to take care of the loads whatever so we have uh, different types of uncertainty in fact i should say that the um, the soil all all measurements are actually variable and uh, that is one thing we call it as inherently inherent variability second thing would be that measurement variability like but then you need to take more samples or have a better very very good instrumentation to see that the uh, coefficient of variation which is something a measure of the variability is reduced or even sometimes we make uh, the, we have what is called another um, problem or issue is that we have the knowledge uncertainty because we know that the soil is not elastic we, are, we assume that it's elastic like you know the soil is basically particulate and uh, you apply a load it keeps it comp- it gets compressed so there is it's non linear somewhat right from the beginning to the end but then we for simple approximations to some load levels we, we call it uh, elastic but it's okay but then we should understand the limitations when when it is not going to be elastic or what are the consequences and you should use better modeling uh we should also understand that the like i can give a simple example of how much of factor of safety should be there you know say for example we know that the coefficient of uh, uh, variation of different properties are all variable c is variable phi is variable or friction angle is variable tan phi so if everything is variable so factor of safety is also variable so if you are able to find out what is the probability that the factor of safety is more than 1 and if i say that it's 95% i'm happy with that you know 95% like we also do about characteristic strength of concrete or whatever characteristic values we have we try to see that uh, you know you want to avoid the traffic jam 95% of the time or you want to see that you want to be 95% of the time okay or you want to be 80% of the okay no so we have to really understand what level of risk you can take can you take a risk of 50% no because 50% is something very bad like so i don't want to take a risk that i cannot say either it's 50 50 maybe i would like to go for 80 85 90 95 
you know that's what people do and um, so we need to have this concepts like random variables random processes all of this on random fields because to understand the quality control and other aspects to practice them properly in infrastructure these concepts are very very essential because the, the way that to understand failures to improve the performance of structures this is very very essential so there are a lot of issues again how do you get design parameters in the field because now sometimes how many boreholes are required there is a challenge that we have we also talk about drained behavior and drained behavior in geotechnical engineering effective stresses again what, how do you get them you know then what is the mechanism of failure like you know you may take the para soil parameters they are all, all right but then how does it fail in the field if the parameters do not represent the failure mechanics then the parameters will not be of use so you have to understand how failure happens then use those parameters properly then the nature of loading itself say for example the loading can be static or it can be a dynamic say for example a traffic loading it's a repeated loading but earthquake loading is different rainfall loading is different uh, so there, then there are so many types of loading that people should understand and so that because you're trying to design say for example a bridge score problem is so there is a score of the bridge you know so sand is coming out so what is that uh, loading it is so we have to understand there are also as i said different types of design like first thing is we we know the normally the design is based on some specifications but then you know are the actually the field the construction practices having some guidelines so people go by certain practices uh, but then they are all governed by certain designs essentially you know design is a is a design philosophy one can go like factor of safety was was one design approach the second design approach that one can have is a reliability based design approach where there is a lot of uh, data driven uh, you know um, in, inputs can be there even in reliability based uh, design approach there are a lot of uh, classifications like level 1 level 2 level 3 and even you can do reliability based optimization because your objective is to really construct a structure such that uh, say for example 50 years or 20 or 20 years of design life if you say in 20 years of design life you must establish lot of things like you must be able to monitor its performance you must look at loads you should look at uh, uh, measurement measurement of properties and all of that so that gives lot of uh, creation uh, job opportunities that also gives lot of opportunities for understanding the uh, systems so the other concept nowadays is coming is that sustainability based designs like you know it's not just about economy that you are looking at you have to look at environmental costs you have to look at social societal costs so we call it them as sustainability based designs people have been trying to say that you can use what is called uh, you know the um, resilience in design you know so the thing is that uh, even resilience in the sense that recovery or redundancy a bit of redundancy in design you know um, or even some ideas like uh, climate responsive designs you know you you see there are so many things that one can think of uh, because the issues are that any of the design processes they are all complementary to each other none is replacing any other one and we try to use you know as you understand that systems better we try to you know objective is to go from a uh, you know good in i mean relatively minimum information to maximum information and take advantage of how information can be used in design that's what is happening in computer science that's what is happening elsewhere in any of the engineering disciplines and why civil engineering cannot be at the same pace you know because we, the investments that are required in civil engineering are too huge and it's quite useful so if somebody is able to use uh, machine learning and uh, ai techniques and modeling and journal there are a lot of things one can do and um, it, it is quite useful so uh, the um, the would be that as i just mentioned people would be talking about uh, how safe is safe in engineering that's why we call it a factor of safety based approach so we use a factors of safety of 2 or 3 or 1.5 depending on its um, variations of properties and all of that so it's it is as i said we should really uh, look at 
uh, first level of design should be a reliability based design apart from your factor of safety design because as i said uh, if you are able to make sure that the probability of factor of safety of one is uh, having it is more than 90% or 95% the job is done or maybe for a period of 10 years or 5 years or 20 or 50 years or 100 years so you must really look at lot of data say for example it it can be you know uh, earthquakes it can be landslides i can give an example in uh, so landslides do come regularly every year in himalayas or even south but then we don't have proper data with the result that what is happening is that we are not able to really know how much of uh, funds are required to rehabilitate make this area landslide prone uh, the landslide prone area free from landslides can we really come out with a system how long it will take to uh, see that this area is minimum affected can we plan for it or if there is a soil contamination or if there is a air pollution in delhi can it be free from air pollution what are the measures so the, we need to really back calculate and understand and uh, so this understanding of safety both in terms of economy environment and uh, its acceptance socially something that's very very important so the i, I normally um, you know particularly the nowadays the reliability based designs are uh, receiving attention uh, that has become more important because the thing is that in the infrastructure there is a lot of money being spent and uh, when there is so much money being spent uh, the we need to really account, account uh, you know uh, for its safety like uh, you know and then you know we are we must be able to answer whether it is a failure of dikes in us or any of the problems in elsewhere in the country or you know like even in uh, con- soil contamination oil contamination in maldives recently or any anything you know it can be causes can be extreme events floods earthquakes and there are so many things even man made causes like mm-hmm. poor maintenance and um, lim- the issue is that you are trying to optimize the resources that's what is issue so the why i was also suggesting the risk based procedures is that risk perception is different for different uh, things uh, different people you know so for example the um, risk perception corona is very high you know we see in the country and the world that the risk perception is very high that the death of people because of corona you know people are very afraid of it because the risk uh, risk perception is high but uh, you know you may be realizing if you take statistics else, elsewhere that the earth, the loss of life or the number of people affected due to earthquakes floods or even poor maintenance there are many re- there are, they, they are not small even the risk are the number of people affected they are also equally high one should recognize that so one should really look at uh, some of these things so that way the risk assessment has to be properly done of course nowadays we have a lot of guidelines on this on quantitative risk assessment procedures like uh, you know and how many people can be exposed to a particular uh, hazard or how much of money one can spend because it depends on the availability and then can you stretch it out a bit or can you take loans or you know there are so many things that one can really look at it so that way the uh, the risk based design procedures have come to a bigger um, understanding nowadays uh, particularly i request the young generation to look at the data analytics machine learning tools why machine learning is required you know classification of uh, certain things like uh, that is then there is a lot of geospatial information available a lot of data you know you have to create a certain infrastructure uh, data digital infrastructure we been we been calling about digital india or digital world but the when it comes to public um, utilities the there is a long way to go you know uh, so this is where the uh, civil engineers have to play a significant role in collecting data understanding data its implications because civil engineering is the oldest profession so it is it is then if you are able to introduce the data driven approaches in our engineering practice which which should be at a um, uh, very very uh, basic level then it is very very useful and uh, so i would like to highlight certain uh, important problems like so for example 
soil structure interaction in geotechnical engineering. It is so important that many of the buildings, if you want to design properly and understand their response to earthquakes or any of the problems properly, you need to do a soil structure interaction. Uh, so the soil structure interaction can be only done by proper constitutive models, then proper simulation techniques like how the structures are constructed and also understand possible mechanisms. So understanding of proper soil structure interaction can lead to significant savings in buildings, significant savings in actually a proper understanding, number one. Second thing would be there could be a proper understanding of the uh, uh, construction sequence. Hence, the the, even there could be economy achieved as well. But the thing is that you are sure about what is happening in the system itself completely. If you have proper measurement of properties, proper response analysis of building, which is by soil structure interaction analysis, or even performance monitoring, like you need to really put a lot of uh, equipment to monitor the, uh, the performance. Uh, so a lot of examples can be given that, uh, you know, uh, the classic example is the Leaning Tower of PSI itself that they have been monitoring for a very long time. You know, you can see that it's a simple structure, but the performance of the Leaning Tower is the Leaning Tower of PSI is monitored for very nicely. Uh, to see that uh, you know it's uh, uh, you know still stable and uh, you know a lot of uh, attention is there on that so a good soil structure interaction a good understanding of um, soil behavior then the response to loading and the, uh, this is very essential so this is a specialized area where one can say that if somebody is good in uh, foundation engineering uh, you know, you can he he can be an expert in uh, soil structure interaction and many other structures. So he can be expert in um, complete uh, design of uh, foundations, which are so critical in many projects. So one can take uh, an expertise in the, in the foundation engineering itself, and he can be a bridge designer, bridge foundation designer, and many other things. That's a vast scope in India or abroad, because uh, if you're able to prove yourself very well, that's one important thing. Uh, the other thing is uh, that. Soil fluid interactions, you know, you see why landslides are occurring, why score, uh, scores are happening, a uh, score is happening, why erosion problems are there. And see, there are a lot of rainfall induced landslides. There are multi hazards. You know, the, what is happening is that what is taught in engineering is some basic concepts are given to understand certain um, problems. But then field could be quite, quite complex. So how is that you, you can create models in the from the field and then make you should develop calculation models what is taught at btech level or master's level or maybe at research level or they have their own uh, have a set of purpose for it specific purpose but if you want to understand it completely in a bigger sense you need to really understand the uh, some of these concepts you know why is that failure happened you know why is that landslide is it because of earthquake or is it because of landslide or is it because of man made interactions or something so one needs to really look at it. So fluid uh, soil interaction is something, another challenging area. Um, um, dam design, seepage related issues. You know, it's, you know, people connected with the dam design or any other earth, earth dam design or many other things, you know, it's a, that's a, a challenge by itself. So there are so many landslides or even there are many, many other issues. Um, so the other thing that I just wanted to tell was about back analysis. Okay, back analysis in engineering is something very, very important uh, because we know that if there is a failure, then you should know why it failed. Then, then the moment you know that why it failed, your objective would be to see that it doesn't fail next time. So your data analysis, the, so the, the moment you have a failure, you know the failure mechanism. Is it a slip circle failure? Is it a wedge failure? Or is it a failure induced by rainfall? Or is it induced by uh, uh, additional loading? There could be many things. No? If there is a additional loading that comes on the structure, it fails. So one needs to understand some of these mechanics uh, and then develop calculation models, then use maybe numerical methods or even simple limit equilibrium methods or simple methods for analysis and understanding considering the properties. So this is a very, very important area that in my opinion, one can uh, think of like, um, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, some of these, uh, you know, uh, fluid soil interactions. Uh, one can develop a lot of uh, hazard zonation maps, 
based on some of these issues. And as I just mentioned, the uh, use of uh, geographical information systems combined with uh, um, remote sensing and other uh, techniques of data analytics, it will tell you a lot of uh, uh, you know information about zones, zoning one can do properly and try to eliminate the hazard. You know, the thing is that uh, particularly in hazards, we have to have, you know, you need to really, uh, you have to make a vulnerability assessment, then hazard assessment, then risk assessment. The three steps are there. So in any of the engineering uh, disciplines we need, particularly when you're looking at um, large scales, uh, you know, the so this is very essential. Other subject I just mentioned in the beginning was uh, that uh, transportation geotechnics. Actually, many engineers they're already you know particularly connected to the da the road infrastructure, railway infrastructure, or there are so many tunnels and all that. They're they're all into uh, transportation infrastructure, and the geotechnical engineering is quite challenging. And uh, one can really come out with uh, uh, you know proper. Uh, it, it's a specialty on its own, and people are already specialists in that. But imagine that you have a group addressing only this. You know, like, you know, for example, we have in India, Indian Roads Congress, we have Central Road Research Institute. There are some are organizations, but there is a scope for many. Like, you know, at state level, do we have? No. At district level, we have? No. No, I mean, it's you may not be having, a, say, for example, a, a, a few group of students, a few engineers can look at the problems. You know, it's not necessary to establish a an office there, but you know, it establish a, a, a like-minded groups to understand the problems. And definitely, once you have a lot of data and understanding, you can project the issues properly and solve the issues properly. Otherwise, what happens? It leads to a lot of uh, issues of uh, uh, trans the you know um, debate. Um, other thing that I just mentioned was that many people are. Uh, moving towards sustainability in uh, civil engineering practice and uh, that is because of the you know the um, sustainable development goals that are promulgated recently uh, in 2015 uh, we have an agenda and in that the many of this uh, we have sustainable development goals uh, so for example you somebody i request some of you to look into this um, there, there are some goals related to provision of clean water, sanitation, resilient cities, smart infrastructure, clean environment, climate effects. These are all sustainable development goals. We need to really look at as, uh, as civil engineers can only address this properly. Most of this, uh, of the, of the, out of the 17, five of uh, have a, a need expert, expertise of geo civil engineering are uh, geotechnical engineering professionals. You know, it's all a combination. As I, sh I should say that geotechnical engineering is interdisciplinary. Like you need to interact with structural engineers. You should uh, look at, interact with all others that are connected with this to make stable and um, durable structures. So sustainable engineering is a key that one should understand. And I also mentioned uh, geosynthetics in the beginning. The geosynthetics have, a, you know, have become an important uh, component of design. And uh, see, we should see this is something that as civil engineers were used to uh, so concrete, steel and soil. But this is one material that is helping you to come out with some problems, uh, uh, solutions to some problems in, in the sense that if there is a, a filtration problem, geotextiles will help you. Or if there's a strength, because soil is poor in strength, so it can provide additional tensile resistance and because of that shear interactions that take place. So it's quite a valuable uh, material. And um, the geosynthetics have a lot of uh, uh, advantage and uh, one should be able to really use them in a, a systematic way uh, in practice. Um, uh, there's a lot of scope for a lot of research again. Um, so the, as I said, uh, these materials have been used for many of the applications like separation, filtration, reinforcement, drainage, and moisture barrier. You know, all of, I think you, you can see there are so many, uh, so much literature on this, books, journals on this. I think the, that is again a lifetime experience. One can be an expert in geosynthetics and then spend their lifetime in this, That's which actually many of the people are doing. Um, 
then the reuse of recycled materials you know what is happening in india or you know abroad is that the uh, recycling the uh, say for example highway materials you know if you want to develop specifications for recycled materials it's only the geotechnical engineering or even other engineering you know you, you uh, the civil engineering you know we need to uh, see that the waste materials are properly characterized and uh, they're reused because the you know uh, we can't use the uh, natural materials for a very long time because we have a finite uh, planet right so essentially we are interested in using this materials in a judicious way and uh, see that the recycled materials are uh, inferior material quality there there is there, there could be some materials that are inferior i can give an example in northeast that the materials that they have may not be appropriate as aggregate materials but if you use geo grids or geo cells then there is a possibility that one can use them uh, very well and you can specify the performance you can you can design the structures for your requirements rather than uh, just limited by soil properties alone so the use of the geosynthetic materials is that it gives a nice opportunity for you to redesign completely uh because uh, it gives that uh, as a challenging it's a challenging opportunity for a designer and a good uh, uh system for a contractor because he also gets profits he will also be happy that the work is uh, constructed in a very convenient way and then even the owner would be happy because it leads to cost effective designs not not only uh, not only cost effective durable designs where the performance can be predicted or even measured and predicted so things are quite uh clear and so there is a need to really push some of this uh, materials into uh, practice in a significant way uh the other point that i was uh, just so this is about geosynthetic engineering alone like you know, as i said somebody can really spend a lifetime on geosynthetics alone and i need, i know a lot of youngsters uh, who have been doing it already uh, but then there is a bigger role to many people to do that and um, other important area that i find in geotechnical engineering is geo environmental engineering i know many experts professors you know they are spending their lifetime in this because of the um, important top uh, importance that it has and you know you you see that environmental protection has become very very paramount for governments public so unless we really develop proper engineering systems um, say for example you can say that in literature if you look at uh, landfills the landfills in maybe in 1960s and 50s it's not there even in 70s 80s it's not there now only in, during 90s it has picked up and now you see that the there's a lot of uh, problems of waste generation everywhere we are not able to understand the behavior of landfills some places it's fine but in some other countries it's not good a lot of dumps a lot of contamination is there in many places a lot of methane gas emissions are there so it is a it's a challenge by itself and it's quite interdisciplinary the geotechnical engineering uh, connected with environment is quite interdisciplinary one should really interact with um, uh, geotechnical um, groups should interact with environmental engineering and hydraulic uh, group hydraulic engineering groups to understand how the system can be designed better so because you know i i think you know they particularly the understanding that uh, even you know people have been talking about um, contamination migration through rocks that's another challenge area because a fractured rock can lead to a lot of contamination though um, you know there are a lot of issues at least in some of the places i have been working on it uh, in geotechnical engineering we are used to this three phase diagram that air water and soil you know which is something you know you look at uh, weight fractions and volume fractions but when it comes to geotechnical engineering one should be really careful because in the same void you will have methane or you have any other uh, gas in the water instead of water it's not water it's about a leachate you know so because of the leachate which has uh, so many contaminants um, it can be biological it can be chemical anything so it will interact with soil so somebody should be really good in biology somebody should be really good in chemical engineering or chemistry and uh, you know process design 
and then uh, you know it is somewhat much more intricate so somebody should be more thorough with uh, uh, you know understanding of uh, much more rather than just simple mechanics or you know we need to really ex uh, expand our s scope to understand global problems so like that's a quite an important requirement and many people have been working so for example pollution control boards and uh, you know and geoenvironmental engineering agencies there it actually requirement is so much but unfortunately in the, we don't have some systems there until so we cannot wait for the environment to degrade right so you need to really take uh, stock and then you know prove yourself that these are all required so because i just mentioned uh, the truth truth you know if you are able to protect the environment it is uh, that's environmental will protect you you know that's what it says so so there are a lot of opportunities in uh, engineering geotechnical engineering i should say that uh, proper soil investigations or even i should say tar proper data collection you know uh, even the development of equipment to uh, so for example spt test which is uh, so widely used or abused in engineering uh, you can have a energy measurement uh, devices or you can you can do a lot of instrumentation nowadays we don't need to practice what was done in 70s so soil investigations uh, can be improved interpretation skills need to be you know because if you have more data you will understand it better like as i said we should go by data driven approaches design parameters as i said you should understand the so their uh, role of uh, the failure mechanics then come out with the proper design procedures and then understand the influence and cost so this alone you know you have a lot of soil investigation companies everywhere can they can extend uh, themselves to understand to you know make it more objective in terms of uh, analysis in design that's an important area which actually a lot of companies are doing but i think they can improve in scope and then have more um, um encompassing jobs then ground engineering has been always a challenge in many of the areas like if you are able to come out with cost effective solutions for uh, uh, you know then it's great so that's uh, ground engineering has always been an important subject and we have seen a lot of companies in india and abroad doing extremely well and geocentrics is another valuable opportunity that it provides and uh, you know one can do that the sustainability based designs uh, we have uh, i think professor krishnaradi is here so i think he is an expert in in this area so uh, we have a lot of um, understanding of this uh, techniques we need to have and definitely there is a lot of knowledge but until it's practiced and implemented in the uh, local environmental conditions uh, the it doesn't improve um, as i also mentioned about climate resistant designs or responsive designs climate responsive designs not uh, so um, so we need to really look at uh, you know uh, how do you re really look at uh, uh, you know consideration of climatic effects into design process like for example i can give a, an example of road road design pavement uh, design you see that in mumbai you know or mumbai in many of the places the drainage design is so poor i don't know where is the problem you know we should understand in some of the places like why is this happening in every every year it happens and there is a, the loss of uh, life lot of uh, inconvenience to public is so much that why is it like this is there any solution for this i think you know some of these people who are uh, uh, you know facing this uh, issues every year need to really look at is there any possible way of understanding this like urban flooding why is it happening regularly is there any systematic approach to understand or are the lakes particularly in urban areas are they good you know so what is happening is that the urban bodies that we have urban local bodies they are also not very completely uh, competent in understanding because they are used to traditional engineering but the scope of engineering has expanded so much that uh, you know unless somebody like youngsters or there is knowledge driven groups are there trying to implement the systems it will not really help so the uh, the other thing that i have said you know landslides you know in fact one can have a, 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 i mean slope stability problems or dam engineers or even the as i said data analytics persons you know with, with a civil engineering background they are very very useful so there are so many opportunities as a foundation engineer as a highway engineer 
as a you know dam rehabilitation engineer you know the thing is we have to focus uh, talk to the government agencies or others or even we have to form some groups where we try to highlight some of these important things and uh, you know that way the indian geotechnical society which is uh, affiliated to ismg can form uh, have uh, have that um, it is a very good uh, society which is of 70 more than 70 years old I am a president of the Indian Geotechnical Society. We really harness these ideas and make things work. So that's um, um, one can be a geo-environmental engineering, which is badly required. We can have a sustainability engineer. You know, uh, so there are so many opportunities one can think of. And uh, I have a lot of questions on you know um, the uh, mission learning and uh, other things you know it's definitely there is a lot of scope i have seen a lot of youngsters from second year btech third year uh, btech students doing extremely well on trying to understand this uh, how the data analysis properly can be used in design so that way we have to create an ecosystem in india or elsewhere that we should go into the systems the other thing that uh, I was just mentioning is about uh, infrastructure uh, performance monitoring where sensors play a significant role. Like uh, they have a lot of startups that have come up on uh, sensors. So health monitoring of structures, bridges, it has become very, very important. Uh, so one can really interact with um, um, some um, group of engineers where you one can develop sensors, install it, monitor it. This is a job in uh, some of the countries elsewhere that the data analysis is always done and with integration with the development of sensors and all of that. So my recommendations would be that I would like to say that geotechnical engineering in particular uh, is highly interdisciplinary and uh, you know it's not what we learned previously maybe two subjects or three subjects you know people should recognize that uh, geotechnical engineering is quite uh, encompassing you know uh, it really uh, wide its scope is so wide that the governments need to understand that and uh, you know the local people should understand it's not like when the problem comes uh, whom to blame or it's that we even people should understand that this is a set of group of people who can solve this sort of problems you have to really give that uh, you know responsibility that this is your responsibility come out with a proper design procedure so for example urban flooding it's essentially a question of uh, you know uh, the inter integration of hydraulics hydrology and geotechnical or drainage engineering or whatever you can call it uh, whatever is engineering so why is that is there no solution from engineering side you know you have so many engineering colleges uh, uh, top class institutes why is that it's happening so unless we think rationally i think it's not uh, uh, appropriate so i th there's a lot of scope uh, in um, uh, our uh, trying to extend our uh, horizons we have to put our thinking cap and particularly you have a lot of you have to create opportunities for our ourselves i mean i should say engineering uh, so that you know you you really uh, live by it and um, so the even you know once you see that sort of growth i know it automatically takes care of uh, itself. Like as I said, truth is the ultimate thing. You know, if uh, things are, uh, truth is for public safety in the protection of infrastructure. So if uh, some of the good engineering is practiced well, and uh, then I think uh, the um, everybody is a winner. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll be happy to clarify any questions. Yeah, I'm seeing the chat box. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there are some questions previously that on uh, machine learning and uh, data analytics, uh, as, as I've been emphasizing uh, throughout my um, uh, the lecture that, you know, we should go by data driven approaches, data driven approaches. Um, you know, that's seen computer science and, um, and other branches that are very well developed. So it is our objective to take that knowledge and then implement here. Then, uh, yeah, somebody was talking about many amalgamation of many traits of engineering. Yes, actually, see the oldest branch is civil engineering. Uh, it has become you know so diversified that uh, we are left. I think we should encompass and uh, pull all of them together. We should really, because a lot of investments are made on this. And, um, you know, this is what I would like to say.
and um, so uh, i see some more questions on um, the uh, flooding flooding is essential as i said um, you know see the problem is that the you know we have to understand the hydrology you know i say because nowadays there is uh, climate change effects and we should be able to understand the uh, uh, you know the intensity duration frequency there are many other hydrological considerations that we need to understand then second thing our hydraulic design to what extent our uh, spaces you know in the government you know you, you can see that it is not um, the drainage design is something very poor in uh, most of the places and of course if it is a by natural uh, phenomena if it happens it's not easy but then by our design we should avoid that's number one then um, we have a lot of uh, you know we, we, the innovation is a key here you know the thing is like um, i still remember that uh, you know uh, my uh, uh, you know even rivers are being trained to change their courses so there are a lot of things that are, can happen you know high level uh, geological engineering we don't know uh, of course we cannot really interfere with nature but at the same time we should really uh, act locally and uh, think globally that's what i believe so if you have any questions you can put me in the chat box and uh, you know or uh, get in touch with me by email or you know call i'll be happy to provide uh, as i said uh, geotechnical engineering or civil engineering is by it's more interactive and um, essentially that uh, you know the unless uh, we highlight these aspects in uh, practice uh, it is all that uh, you know um, it, it, it will lead to a lot of developments it's good for the um, uh, generations to come so thank you very much yeah i think there was a nice question that uh, you know um uh, talking about interdisciplinary uh, nature from ravindra kumar golia yes i agree with you that it is a you know uh, one should be interdisciplinary because uh, the way that we our objective is to solve the problems as engineers and uh, so that way it's important i had another question here how indian geotechnical society will help build a career okay i think career is to be built by you i mean divya okay whatever okay well, i will say that you can uh, you can contact me separately but the thing is indian geotechnical society can help in knowledge uh, enrichment you can meet a lot of people you can look at lot of opportunities that you have like you can attend indian geotechnical society conferences where there is a lot of experts come and definitely it helps in uh, your career growth you will get new ideas and i'm happy with this question because uh, it's very important that uh, it's not any any other subject you know for that you know because we are a knowledge driven society and um, so uh, and then we are used to now lifelong learning so knowledge is power so you need to really look at this um any more questions um, yeah so if there are no more questions uh, thank you professor uh, amit sivatsava and uh, sagar for your um, arrangements thank you one and all for giving me an opportunity to talk to you all Thank you very much. Yeah, there is a question about GIS. Yes, combine GIS with geological engineering generation. Can you? Yes, uh, definitely. A lot of work is being done on these lines. Uh, say, for example. the um uh, contamination you know soil contamination or air pollution you know these things can be um, you know if you are able to have some measurement uh, in some places 
then one can uh, create there are some uh, techniques called clustering techniques you know like based on certain measurements because you can't measure everything so you measure certain things in a place and then um, you know create some zones and of clustering and then make some uh, uh, it will be very useful for decision makers on how how much money is required to clean up the sites So my email ID is uh, Divya is asking gl sivkumar at gmail dot com and uh, my mobile number is nine four four eight four eight zero six seven one. So you can check in internet and uh, all the details are available. So thank you one and all.